Gurley is the founder and CEO of Reventure Consulting, a real estate research firm. And Nick, it's great to have you on Last Call. 33 million views. I just wonder if you are surprised by the virality of your tweets. You know what, Carl? First of all, it's great to be with you. But secondly, I am not surprised because I think a lot of people know that the Airbnb market has boomed over the last couple of years during the pandemic. Lots of people bought Airbnbs, uh, deprived the housing market of listings, and now that bubble is collapsing. So I'm actually not surprised that there was a lot of interest in it, especially given the cities that were involved, like Phoenix and Austin. Is the thinking that there were a wave of people who bought property that they cannot afford without this income? Oh, 100%, especially because a lot of these owners use what's called DSCR loans to purchase these properties. These are loans that uh, lenders will give to Airbnb operators where they actually don't verify the personal income of the borrower, but it's actually based on the income of the property. And so long as the income of the Airbnb property is high, things are good. But if income on the Airbnb property goes down, then these owners and operators have some problems because uh, their lender is not going to like that, and it could trigger a default on these DSCR loans. All right. How does it square with, obviously, Airbnb's response, which we, which we read, and just the general sense that there is a, uh, a wave of pent-up demand for travel, there's a huge nest egg, at least among baby boomers, uh, $75 trillion by some accounts, that's going to get spent over the next couple of maybe decade or two, um, and that's going to involve uh, needing lodging. Does that, this sort of flies in the face of that, doesn't it? Yeah, somewhat. And I just want to actually draw a distinction between Airbnb's corporate success and the success of an individual Airbnb operator, because Airbnb is right. Their nights booked have gone up. The issue is the supply of Airbnb listings has gone up by more, especially in certain cities like Phoenix. So when the supply of listings exceeds the demand, you have issues for the owners and operators, even though Airbnb at the corporate level still thinks uh, things are pretty good. Right. The markets. And then to address. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was well, to address your second point about, uh, you know, are, are people going to need a place to stay? I think you're right. They will need a place to stay. The trouble is Airbnbs are a very discretionary uh, item to spend money on. And especially in like a recessionary environment, you know, I don't necessarily think Airbnb is going to perform that well. Right now, the unemployment rate is only 3.7 percent or thereabouts. I mean, what if that unemployment rate goes up to 6 or 7 percent? I think one of the things people are going to cut back on is discretionary travel. So I think from a, just a secular standpoint, in the, in the near term, there could be more headwinds coming for these Airbnb yeah, operators. If we, if, we, if we go to 6 percent unemployment, uh, we could have much bigger problems to talk about. I do want to point your attention to inventory for sale. I'm sure you, I'm sure you know the number of homes for sale in this country has never been lower. Um, it, selling at this point, if you're going to buy somewhere else, would require you graduating into perhaps a higher rate. I mean, there still is a sense that people aren't selling because they've got these velvet handcuffs of rates below four. That's a great point, Carl. I mean, why would someone want to give up a 3% mortgage rate to trade that out for a 7% mortgage rate and buy a new home? The thing to understand about that, though, is that's actually not really a net impact on inventory. It's someone not listing but also not buying. The real problem right now that's constraining inventory is that we haven't gotten to the point yet where the discretionary buyers during the pandemic feel forced to sell. Those Airbnb owners who purchased, those big Wall Street investors who purchased homes, some of them are just now starting to feel the pain of lower revenues and higher vacancy rates. And I think as they continue to see the pain, you're going to see more of those discretionary owners who don't actually live in the home, but own it for an investment or a speculative purpose. I think they're going to be the ones that actually increase inventory over the next hmm. couple of years. You, finally, you said that there would be more data to come in the coming weeks. Are you standing by the numbers that you tweeted for now? Yeah, I think both of those sources, AirDNA and All the Rooms, are reputable, but the differences between them are big. So I'm going to do more research and uh, understand what's driving those differences and do a follow-up tweet and a follow-up YouTube video. I will say this. There's a bunch of places, though, that both of those sources agree, most namely that the supply of Airbnbs has absolutely exploded over the last year in certain cities. And that now you have, like, in Phoenix and Austin, two to three times more Airbnbs on the market than homes for sale. What does that mean when there's a uh, downturn in the Airbnb market? I think it means more forced selling. Yeah.